You know basketball season is around the corner when your boy, Joe Mullinax, gets on X or whatever the heck it's called nowadays and creates a bit of a stir uh, with a trade idea coming off of reports from Cham Sharania of Stadium that maybe there's some unhappiness with Buddy Heald in Indiana and he might be on his way out. Maybe Los Angeles is the ultimate destination, but could it be by way of Memphis? Would that Ooh. make sense for the Grizzlies? We're going to talk about that next here on Locked on Grizzlies. Let's lock in. You are Locked on Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. It is a Thursday edition of Locked On Grizzlies, and DeMichael Cole and myself are so happy that you are joining us wherever you may be doing so, however you take in the show, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. You can like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, all of those wonderful things. Thank you for making us at Locked On Grizzlies part of your NBA and Memphis Grizzlies content experience. And again, your team each and every day, just about. We're back to being just about daily here on Locked on Grizzlies. And you're not going to find many podcasts that are able to pull that off, having somebody, the quality of DeMichael Cole, the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee, the craziness of Joe Molinax, myself, (laughs) over at Bluff City Media. Each and every day, at least one of us, usually two of us, will be with you talking Memphis Grizzlies as the season approaches. I think you just got to subscribe. You got to make that choice right now if you haven't already done so. Hit that button jump on board as the lockdown grizzlies train leaves the station to michael i don't know if you could tell or not but i'm excited and the reason i'm excited i'm excited always to talk to you (laughs) i'm always excited to talk to you i want to make that very clear but i have a greater energy a greater amount of focus on this particular episode of lockdown grizzlies because when trade rumors come about Mm-hmm. I'm a freaking horse with blinders, man. It might as well be the Kentucky Derby, and I've got a big old carrot in front of my face that's, you know, for me it would be like a king-size Kit Kat or something like that. But I'm running towards it. I'm fired up. I'm focused. I'm engaged. I am ready. Buddy healed, according to Sham Sharania of The Athletic and Stadium and all of these other places. Potentially, since they can't come to a contract agreement, might be on the move from Indiana. Buddy healed has been a part of Los Angeles Lakers trades rumors for a long time. So I do think it's important to point out that that's the most likely end of this is healed winding up with the Lakers in in some way, shape or form. But this is not locked on Lakers, although I love that show. This is locked on Grizzlies. And I, dear to Michael, am interested in what you think the possibilities might be with a buddy healed on the Memphis Grizzlies, because I do think the way you perceive healed in Memphis kind of tells you a lot about how you perceive the Memphis Grizzlies going into the season. That's a good way of putting it. That That's a really good way of putting it. But so Buddy Hill, this is a conversation that other teams probably should have ahead of the Grizzlies. But as you said, this is locked on Grizzlies. Yeah. And, and there is some validity to having this conversation. Let's, let's get to the obvious. Let's state what a lot of people who want to debunk the idea will – say off the top. Mm-hmm. They'll say that the Grizzlies have Desmond Bain, the Grizzlies have Luke Kennard. Why in the world would the Grizzlies acquire uh, a third guard uh, to add that's basically a replica in the way of what those guards will do for you? Well, guess what? One thing about the game of basketball, has there ever been a team that's had too much shooting on it? No, it doesn't I, exist. I, I've, never, I've never seen someone say that team has too much shooting they can't win because they have and too as, much shooting. And as someone who lived through the grit and grind Grizzlies covering <laughs> that team, you will never you hear me ever say mm-hmm. the Grizzlies have too much shooting. Exactly. And and again, there, he isn't a perfect fit. Let's clearly like of course. There, he he's a six four shooting guard with limited athleticism, which is why you know he's in the position that he's in right now. Which is why if the Pacers and and Heald have not come to a deal. But the reason he's a hot commodity is the obvious. I mean, Joe, you're going to get into it probably a little bit more later, but the Mm -hmm. shooting is plus. Uh, When I say plus, it's elite. Uh, He's one of the best shooters in the world, period. And he has been. He's been consistent. Whether it was with the Kings, he came over to the Pacers, uh, puts up similar shooting numbers. 
He is one of those dead eye target shooters in the NBA, uh, in the mold of Luke Kennard, Desmond Bain. But he can, like Desmond Bain, he can do it off the dribble some. It's not just a lot of spot ups like in Luke Kennard's game. So I think there's a little more there uh, from that perspective. So how would it make sense? In, in my mind, I think if you're the Grizzlies, you know, uh, you you can't get enough uh, scoring from that bench unit. And you have a lot of tradable assets. We talked about the contracts that the Grizzlies will eventually have to move. Some of these players that the Grizzlies probably will end up having to weigh are players that you could trade, and there's another team that will take them on. For example, Josh Christopher. You're mm -hmm. telling me that if there's not a team in the NBA, if the Grizzlies, I mean, you look at the Grizzlies roster, it's hard to see a spot for Josh Christopher. But if that's the case, you're telling me that that there are 20, what, 27, 28 other teams in the NBA that would say, hey, we, we, we don't want anything to do with Josh Christopher. Somebody's going to bite the apple. Mm -hmm. Some Somebody out there will be willing to bite it. And that's one way the Grizzlies could get involved. Uh, the other way that the Grizzlies could get involved in this thing is, and you touched on it a little bit earlier, and the Grizzlies have a trade exception right now. That, that makes them, we've talked about how they could use that trade exception to bring in an impactful player. They also could use that trade exception to take on a contract to mm -hmm. help move the money as a third team in these deals. Yeah, give us that trade exception. Yeah, we'll take on that bad player in the deal to make the money work. But along with getting that bad player, you know what else we want? We want a first round of pick. Yeah. Along with it. So that's another way that the Grizzlies get involved in this. But we can talk about both. Joe, what did you say? I believe personally to Michael that with the Marcus Smart trade, they are in win now territory right yeah. and given that given that they are in that circumstance they are staring down we want to compete in the playoffs we need 16 game types of guys we need players that are going to maximize the abilities of our big three john morant desmond bain jaron jackson jr it may only be for this season because if you do make a trade for Heald, I do think you need to try to extend him, and that probably means yeah. Luke one year left on his deal. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. I mean, there's there's a certainly a risk that would be uh, happening, and that'll go into our trade piece conversation that we'll talk about later in the show. I am of the mindset that if a player can come available that is going to make your team better, and you have the pieces in place to potentially acquire them, you at least kick the tires. Because as you said a moment ago to Michael, and I think you're right, there are teams that Buddy Heald makes more sense on. I'm not disputing that. That is not an argument that I would have with you. For I sure. wouldn't argue with you anyway because you're <laughs> Michael, and I, I just care too much about you. But I think that when push comes to shove, mm -hmm. and, and this is one of my favorite things about Grizzlies fans, you you, and this is probably just fans in general, oh, well, we need this. We need to improve half-court offense. The Grizzlies half-court offense is, in my opinion, easily the worst part of this team. How do you get better with that? In the absence of an OG Ananobi or Mikel Bridges, that might have been plan A and plan B, right? Or maybe invert the order there, plan yep, B and plan yeah, A. Yeah. In the absence of those guys, yeah, Buddy Heald is flawed, but you know what he does? He shoots the leather off the basketball. <laughs> and if you can have Ja Morant next to those guys, for at least one of them, every second John Morant is on the floor. Every second. That is only going to make him better. And oh, by the way, if you have Jaron Jackson Jr. and Steven Adams backing them up, there's no reason that Desmond Bain can't play next to Heald. There's no, it, it, I mean, we're talking about Marcus Smart being a starter with that guy. So it's not like Buddy Heald, I'm not saying that he's a defender because he's not. But in terms of size, if we're worried about undersized guards, nothing changes in that way in terms of size. Now, length of arms and yeah, yeah. the ability to move. I get all that. Mm -hmm. The point I'm trying to make is this. We'll talk more about it in a moment. The, the names that come to mind for me in terms of a trade that would make sense, it would make your team better now. And you have shown through the trade for Marcus Smart that you want to get better now. Maybe it hurts you down the road. I would doubt it. The two names that I'm going to bring up, I doubt it. Uh, and I'm sure you'll disagree with me with at least one of those names. But in terms of trying to build a winner now, it's hard for me to believe that if you make the right type of deal, because again, th this guy's going to be a rental almost, right? Yeah, so yeah. Indiana will basically take what you're willing to give. If you're able to beat those other offers and you acquire someone who, again, 
John Morant will have one less defender to worry about because he's capable of finding that guy on the perimeter, and he shot 43% from three over 2,500 minutes played last year. I feel like we're, you know, we're, we're beating around the bush in terms of what the issue is, and we're not actually trying to solve the problem. Here's my thing. If you make this deal, when you're talking about acquiring this guy, uh, you are going to, and we'll get to it more in, in the next segment, right. so I, and I'll touch on it, but uh, it's going to either stunt the growth of the younger players or you're basically saying, like you said, we're all in and look, we're going to give most of these minutes to Desmond Bain, Luke Kennard, Buddy Heald in the case, and maybe one more wing, probably a John Conchar, uh, to go along with Marcus Smart, John Morant. And you're pretty much pushing everyone else out. You're saying, Derrick Rose, you're going to be on the back burner here. Uh, and all those other young guys, Zaire, David Roddy, Jake Laravia, you might get some minutes down at the four. But basically, I think you're going all in and basically saying, look, we need Desmond Bain to become a better perimeter defender. Like, take it up on the like, mm -hmm. your league average right now. Now we need you to go up even another level. You're going to need – uh, I mean, Luke Kennard, one thing I like about him defensively, he tries. It's not a lack of effort for him. So you, you need him to continue to show that, and I think he'll be fine. Uh, he'll be serviceable, as I like to say. Uh, same thing with Buddy Hill. And as you mentioned, you can I think you can get by in a way. You know, the difference between this Grizzlies team and, like, Portland, for example, Portland Trail Blazers, when they had Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum as a backcourt, they had juice of nurtures on the back end. Like, that's not going to scare anybody. Uh, the Grizzlies have Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson Jr. Like, it's a little bit different. Makes sense to me. H how you perceive the value of Buddy Heal will be our next focus coming up on Locked on Grizzlies because I do think that is kind of part of this disconnect, right? Yeah, what yeah. are you willing to give up? What are you willing to move on from? We'll talk about that next here on Locked on Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Locked on Grizzlies is brought to you by Jace Medical. Jace Medical is a wonderful service that allows for you to feel empowered to care for yourself and your loved ones during the unexpected. Jace Medical offers the Jace case in those cases. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using the code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code Locked On. How far are you willing to go for Buddy Heal? We'll talk about that next here on Locked On Grizzlies. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, one of your hosts of this Thursday edition of the podcast, joined by my co-host, the incomparable to Michael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. I, of course, of Bluff City Media, Grizzlies columnist. I'll be getting back in the swing over there over the next couple of weeks, like I know the Michael will be as well as the season uh, gets ramped up. We're pretty close to media day, right? Maybe a week and a half or so yeah, away, a couple yeah. of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. It's sneaking up on us slowly but surely, uh, like, you know, a, a very slow-moving dangerous grizzly bear the, the literal animal uh sneaking up on us with the nba season uh, we're talking about buddy healed on yeah. this episode and again i have the, the main kind of idea for this episode is, is the buddy healed roshark test right and i'm probably mispronouncing that but the the, the ink blot test right you hold up an image and you say oh i see a bear or i see you know i see a tiger i see a woman kissing someone else that isn't me right whatever the case might be yeah. uh what it's a it's a opportunity for you as a fan for us as people that follow the team and cover the team in your case specifically how do we see the grizzlies and this next part of the show is a wonderful dive into that concept because it depends on obviously you have to give up something right and that's twofold how much do you value buddy healed because you know, Tony East of Locked On Pacers, I was interacting with him on X, mm -hmm. and he he thinks my offer is an overpay. He thinks I'm yeah, offering too much said. for Buddy Heald. And Matter of fact, other Joe, people, you, you set, you set the, the X world on fire again, it looks like. I haven't looked right, at all yeah. the replies yet, but I, I saw nine quote it. tweets when I looked at it. So usually that, when I see that, a good thing. That's, that's a great thing. 
But usually, you know, everybody just thinks I'm an idiot or disagrees with me. Some of the quote tweets were like, I hate that I like this, which you mm. know, that tells you that the brand is strong when mm. they hate that they're mm -hmm. agreeing with me. Mm -hmm. um, but here, here's the trade that I suggested. And again, at Joe Mullinax, if you want to follow the carnage on X. Um, I am someone who likes to put out ideas for trades because it gets a lot of good interaction, right? Um, here was my thought process. I have a first round pick, um, the one that the Grizzlies acquired recently via Phoenix or Washington, right? The one that's worse of the two uh, in 2024, protected first round pick. It doesn't even have to necessarily be that one. Um, Zaire Williams, who you and I have talked about at length recently here on Locked on Grizzlies, he to me, he just doesn't fit what they're trying to do. And then Brandon Clark. Brandon Clark being a big who, and I think that's where you're going to give me the most pushback. I very much. You think you know I, me, and, and I like that because you I, do. I, you, I, you've I've questioned, I question how well he's going to recover. I worry that that is $50 million of dead money in terms of compared mm. to what he used to be because he's so dependent on his ability to leap and re-leap and get off the ground very quickly. And the Achilles is kind of important for that. I understand that it's 2023 and medical science has improved. Uh, so a heavily protected first round pick, take your pick because the Grizzlies still have all theirs. So they don't have to worry about um, being in a position where they don't have that ability to make a first round pick, um, or at least after the Phoenix trade, they, they have that. Um and Brandon Clark, who I don't trust in terms of his health, and Zaire Williams, who I don't trust in terms of his fit for Buddy Heald. That is what I suggested. Some people love it. Some people think I'm an idiot, which is pretty par for the course when I interact on X. Uh, using that as a baseline, DeMichael, is that too much in your opinion? Is that too little? Is that close to just right? How are you feeling about what you would give up for Buddy Heald? Oh, Joe, I was waiting on this. I was waiting on this one because – Giving up something for Buddy Hill is, is is an interesting way of putting it because, in a way, I'm not sure that the Pacers would probably even require much in return. If you look at, you know, the way their roster, like Benedict Matten, he is pretty much shaping up to be their two guard or small forward or whatever position he's going to end up playing. But he's basically shaping up to be the Robin to the Batman that is Tyrese Halliburton, mm -hmm. you know, on the perimeter. Buddy Heald is about to kind of get passed up in that way. So uh, it's a contract that has a year left on it, and they're probably just ready to pass it out. So I don't know if they're going to require too much in return. But from the Grizzlies' side, it's all about matching the money. We mentioned it earlier. He has, what, about $19 million left? $19 million. yep. $19 million left on one year of his deal. The Grizzlies have a trade exception that's around $7 million or so. So they have to create – around $12 million in order to make this happen. Oh, starting with Brandon Clark, I just – it's got to be another way you can do it. Sir. It's, it's got to be because uh, I I think you can't close the book on Brandon Clark until the book is closed on Brandon Clark. When Brandon Clark is on the floor alongside of Jaron Jackson Jr., we've seen the Grizzlies do some really special things, and Brandon Clark gives the Grizzlies that versatility in the front court. When Steven Adams – is going against the Timberwolves in the playoffs a couple years ago, and he's struggling. You can just bring in Brandon Clark, change the series around, and he's one of your two best players in that series. Like you, that versatility is a plus. I think you keep him for that reason. But you got to look at some of the other players. You got Zaire Williams out there, that, that the Grizzlies, again, only reason I think the Grizzlies wouldn't make a deal like that, including a guy like Zaire Williams, is basically saying, we have seen enough. We have seen enough. Have the Grizzlies reached that point? I don't know for a fact yet. I, I know that the Grizzlies still are investing in him. They're taking their time with him. We saw it with them uh, basically resting him during the summer league to focus on, you know, his health and things like that. So I think there's still some meat on that bone uh, as well. But I think the best way for the Grizzlies to get involved in this is to make themselves that third team, is to make those calls out, say, hey, if, if – if this team wants to get involved, if you want to get involved, then you need to move some money. You need to move mm -hmm. some salary. Include us. We have a trade exception where we can probably bite into that. Grizzlies may have to trade out a player. Maybe it could be one of your non-roster guys. Trade out a guy like Josh Christopher, Isaiah Todd, throw those contracts in there. 
along with the trade exception. And now you're talking of upwards of $10 million for a team to potentially bring back what uh, a mid-level exception player on another team or something like that. And mm -hmm. both the Grizzlies can find themselves in there and it'll be in their case about a pick. You gain a pick. And I think that's how the Grizzlies can get themselves involved. When it turns that that $19 million is a tough number without, without giving up a player of consequence. And I don't see who the Grizzlies would give up in this case. You, you Brandon Clark makes sense financially, makes a lot of sense. But it, you you knew, Joe. You knew I wasn't going to be down with that. No, one. no, I wouldn't expect anything less from you, partner. Everything you said about Brandon Clark was true. Guess what the key word in the sentence that I just said was? Was. Was. <laughs> it was true. We, we, we keep, you know, skipping over and maybe – on a future episode here in the next week or so, DeMichael, we can have a, a, an Achilles specialist on or something. Yeah, like we, we, we need to talk about your trust need, in doctors in I 2023. Do not, oh, I definitely do not. Yeah, that, that's, you know, a separate conversation for my psychiatrist. But I, I think that there is definitely some – I do not trust that Achilles. I don't trust it because of what makes him or what made him great. And maybe I'm wrong for that. You know, it sounds like you trust it more than me. Yeah. Even if he is 100% healthy, and again, if it goes along with my, okay, they made a trade involving their own first-round picks, they're in. They are now looking at a situation where Brandon Clark's not going to be ready until January, February, and that's on the you know the optimistic level, right? That would put him at, what, 10 months removed from the injury initially? I think he suffered it in March, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. of, this, uh, of 2023. So, uh, you know, he's six months removed from surgery. I know he's doing rehab. There's things that he's actively, you know, able to do now that he wasn't three months ago, and that's obviously reason for optimism. I, I just struggle with thinking that a guy that was so dependent on his ability to get off the floor and then do it again quickly, uh, like a snap of a finger, yeah. that he's going to be able to do that again the way that he used to do it in a, in a rapid form. I just struggle with that. And that's something maybe we can talk about more on a future episode of Locked On Grizzlies. But we're going to close this episode talking about, you know, DeMichael, to his credit, nailed the Derrick Rose signing, the Marcus Smart trade, what the Grizzlies needed in that time period of free agency around the trade. I'm going to ask DeMichael what he thinks they need now. Is Buddy Heald the kind of guy to help their half-court offense or do they need to continue to prioritize internal development? Because in theory, you have Jake LaRavia, right? You have Zaire Williams in terms of a bigger wing that hopefully can defend. Do they just stand pat and maybe try to gain another asset like DeMichael was talking about? We'll talk about that next here on Locked on Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Locked on Grizzlies is brought to you by DeMichael's favorite sponsor of Locked on Grizzlies. That's Bird Dogs. I don't know if you've ever worn Bird Dogs. I know DeMichael has many times, and I have as well. You know, whether it's going fishing, whether you're on a, a, a golf assignment, you know, covering a major golf tournament in the city that you live and work in, whatever the case might be, these things fit so much better than regular shorts do. Regular shorts are made of, of stiff, restricting cotton. Bird dogs fix this by inventing cloud knit fabric. It looks just like khaki, but it stretches so nicely you get a slimmer fit without having to sacrifice any movement. Plus, it's functional for literally any occasion, whether it's a date going out with your friends, going to the pool, lounging around, or going to work. It is fantastic, and you should definitely be on the Bird Dogs bandwagon if you're not already. Go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA or enter the promo code LockedOnNBA at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That is birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA for a free water bottle at checkout. You will not want to take your Bird Dogs off. We can promise you that. When we come back here on Locked On Grizzlies, what does Memphis need? Do they just need to chill out and not tweet about things or post things on X? We'll talk about that next here on Locked On Grizzlies. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, one of your hosts for this podcast that we so lovingly call Locked On Grizzlies. It is a joy to be with you again. It's a joy to be with my partner in crime, partner in chaos, uh, DeMichael is very good at letting me make myself a fool over on X, and then we talk about it on Lockdown Grizzlies. DeMichael Cole, the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. We reap, we reap the benefits of, of Joe Mullen. Oh, yeah. Being, oh, we do. Yeah, we do. You're, you're one of the best on, 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 on Grizzlies X right now. You know, I, I I give you your credit. You know, a lot of people won't say it, but they, they think it. You know, yeah, uh, they're Joe, not going to give me credit. 
you 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 wake up the wolves. You know, when I think Grizzlies Twitter is dead and everyone's watching other sports and things like that, you remind me that everyone's still tuned in to what's going on. I remind you that people just like to yell at me. Like that's something that <laughs> since 2011, 2012 has has been a tradition there in uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, and the surrounding virtual sphere. Uh, this episode, we're talking about Buddy Heald, and we'll finish the episode. You know, obviously the Sham Sharania report that Buddy might get traded. The Lakers make the most sense. There's other teams that probably make more sense than Memphis. What does Memphis need, right? For me, and I alluded to this earlier in the show, <laughs> if they want to be a championship team, they have Marcus Smart, they have Jaron Jackson Jr., they have Steven Adams. You mentioned how Desmond Bain has improved as a defender. They're going to be a top five or so defense in the NBA. I'm not worried about that. That's not mm -hmm. something that I'm really concerned about given their current uh, roster construction. Even if they moved on from Zaire Williams and Brandon Clark, as I suggested earlier in the show, mm -hmm. they need to fix the half court offense. And in the absence of a big wing who can create his own shooting, his own scoring, Brandon Ingram in theory would be perfect, yeah. right? Theoretically speaking, he'd be the perfect guy to put alongside Dead, Dez and Ja and Jaron. And you go into the luxury tax for a few years and you go and you try to compete. Maybe you find a way to duck the luxury tax by a dollar. You know, these guys are capologists. They know how to do it. And you don't have to pay the repeater tax, that sort of stuff. Um, but they have to fix the half-court offense. And then the absence of that kind of guy, the next best thing you can do is maximize the talent that you do have. And you have two backcourt players in Bain and Morant that have the capacity to be able to create their own shot. Bain is an elite three-point shooter in his own right. With Ja out, defensively there might be some concerns yeah. but tell me you wouldn't be excited about the offensive possibilities of desmond bain luke Kennard, buddy healed jaron jackson jr and santi aldama how do you now stop you it the, the the spine shivering that you hear after me saying that lineup is the reality that they would probably give up a lot of points but you know what they're gonna they're gonna score a hell of a lot of points they're gonna that score more literally than they give cannot, up defend that it it's is impossible. impossible it is not possible so and then if you want to be a little more sound defensively you replace one of them with marcus smart and you still have four plus three point shooters including jaron and santi alongside mm -hmm. smart who is not again marcus smart is going to make memphis better offensively simply by being dylan brooks right who had a historically awful offensive season so i i think that they just need to improve the half court offense as best they can and while it may not be this move, I'm acknowledging that, I think that they should be looking for opportunities like this throughout this year to maximize that as best they can, especially by the time that Morant comes back in December. I like it. I like the idea. You you, you know, I've been back and forth on this Buddy Hill thing in terms of I love the potential. When, when I What I said earlier, you can't have enough shooting. There's no such thing. And the Grizzlies – even as presently constructed, I can see this team having some type of shooting concerns if, you know, Desmond Bain and Luke Kennard aren't sharing the floor a lot together. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's probably going to be the case when everyone's healthy. They're not going to be on the floor together. There's going to be some staggering. Keep one of those guys in, you know, at a time type thing. So having a buddy heel gives you a third guy where you can have two of those guys in at a time in certain stretches. But here's my idea. You're talking about the missing piece or whatever. Uh, it's not really a huge missing piece. I, I don't think there's a big boom that the Grizzlies need to add. You've got three guys on the team who are capable of averaging 20-plus points. You have, you know, guys who are capable of making more than two three-pointers per game. You have two former defensive players of the year. You don't have a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, wing that you can say, go guard Kevin Durant, go guard Brandon Ingram. Go guard Kawhi Leonard, go guard Paul George, or go guard uh, Devin Booker consistently. Go guard LeBron James. Uh, sure, some of those names, guess what? Marcus Smart might get in their grill, and he'll win some of those matchups. Don't get me wrong. Marcus Smart will win some of those matchups. Desmond Bain will even hold his own in some of those matchups. But I'm just going to go through a couple free agent names here. Nothing that's going to wow you, so don't, don't expect to hear you know, uh, a wow name. But just a couple names. Maurice Harkless, Stanley Johnson, and, and you know, 
we could say one Toscano Anderson. Nothing, nothing wild, Joe. Joe, Joe. I, I, I see your face, but I, I want to. I want to focus on Mo, Mo Harkless and Stanley Johnson. Mo Harkless in particular, six seven, six eight, six nine. Uh, I mean, six nine. I think in his case, super long armed, has been a starter and a quality defender on some teams where he's at the guard, the number one options every single night. And we're not talking about a big role. We're talking about a specialist. You need a guy when Kevin Durant scoring 25 on you in the first half, go get him, Mo. Like, you you, you need that type of guy. Because right now, I think potentially we could get to the trade deadline and say the Grizzlies need that uh, type of wing defender. Now, the, the question is, and this is the question I always ask everyone else, say, yeah, if you think the Grizzlies need to go out and get that guy, who do you take off the roster? That's where I don't have the answer. Well, I have the answer. It's Brandon Clark and Sire Williams. <laughs> but maybe, maybe uh, you know, it can be a little more challenging than that. And then with the free agency thing, which is, I think, was your point, you're waving somebody, right? Like, yeah, you got to. to go. So is it Kenneth Lofton Jr.? I'm not saying do that. Don't yell at me, Internet. Um, I, I'm saying, is, is that the name? Do you trade John Conchar for a ham sandwich to Indiana or somebody <laughs> like that? I, I am curious as to how this process plays out, because that's one of the fun things. And we talked about this before to Michael, yeah. Zach Klein and Grizzlies GM, they are still, even after the Marcus Smart trade, in a position where it could do pretty much anything, right? They haven't lost a ton of flexibility. They still have the capacity to move on from future first, to go out and go all in a little bit more. Or, I mean, you're exactly right, partner. They could, they could easily just say, hey, Los Angeles, Indy, if you need help, you know, we got this exception. Throw in a first round pick, one of you guys, and, let, and let's uh, let's get this done for you. Let's send Buddy to the Lakers. There's ways for them to get into this that don't necessarily involve Heald becoming a Grizzly that could still make Memphis better in the long run. So they literally could do anything or they could do nothing at all and continue to hope that, you know, one of Zaire Williams, Jake LaRavia, David Roddy becomes that bigger wing that you were talking about that they can count on in those special situations. So it's going to be fun to watch play out again. It was just a reminder that basketball's around the corner. You know, the Damian Lillard stuff doesn't impact Memphis as much because that contract is so big, but buddy healed at 19 million. They could get involved in that relatively easily. And it makes for a fun Thursday edition of the podcast. The next time that locked on Grizzlies is on the air, we'll continue our March toward the regular season, continue to take a look at the roster coaching staff developments, everything that this team needs to do to prepare for the regular season. It's that time of year, DeMichael. It's exciting times We're getting back there. into the basketball groove. Next week is going to be a fun week because uh, we'll soon have media day, so we can get into all the fun, fancy preseason before the preseason predictions and, and our bold predictions that we're going to make. We're going to get to all that good stuff in a few next coming days. It's going to be some fun, uh, so stay tuned for that. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for the next episode of Locked On Grizzlies, wherever it hits your podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. Continue to make the Michael and I and Locked On Grizzlies part of your Grizzlies and NBA experience. Until next time, he's the Michael. I'm Joe. Subscribe, all those fun things. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay locked in. This is Locked On Grizzlies.